Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Tinch JK. How you guys doing? Y'all good? I'm glad. Happy Thanksgiving. I uh, hope you guys ate a lot, because I sure did. I got fat, man. I need to get more fat, though. You know, I'm kind of skinny nowadays. I'm not eating very well. College life, you know. <laughs> but I really hope that you guys have been having a great uh, week, just a great month in general. And I do really hope that you guys ate some turkey or some delicious food or, or had some sort of companionship with somebody in this world if not you could always have one with god you know but um today was a pretty pretty amazing day for me it was really nice um i went to my girlfriend's family dinner kind of thing and kind of got to like just do that whole family turkey dinner kind of thing you know and it was the first time actually meeting them officially and it just brought back so many memories, you know, because the very first time I ever had some sort of experience like this, I was so cocky, I was so like, so arrogant, you know, and I used to just go there with this attitude like, who wouldn't want me as a son-in-law, you know, like, you know, I'm good at this, I'm good at that, like, I had such an arrogant heart, and when I actually went there, I, it was so different from what I expected, I got despised, you know, they were just like, yeah, so what kind of schools you come from? And just sort of, you know, they looked down on me. I, I really felt that energy. And over the years, God has humbled me. He started to show me my true nature. And, and after I turned my life over to Him, my heart was just kind of humbled, you know. So this time, I, I went with a completely different heart. I was just like, Lord, I don't want to go there with myself. <laughs> You know, please replace myself with you. Let me hide behind you. Let your glory and your amazingness come out, you know. And I just kind of prayed before I went. And lo and behold, it was amazing. Did I just say lo and behold? <laughs> but it was amazing, you know. They were so kind to me and they were so loving to me. And they just really loved me, you know. And I was, I was like, ah, oh, I feel so loved. Even the dog loved me, you know. The dog would like sit on me and just like... Pfft you know purring like a little kitten and I was just like utterly amazed and so thankful and I even got a lot of gifts too like look at this look at it look at it what what you know this is tight this is um in in tuos four by Wacom compared to my uh um <laughs> look at this look at this look at this oh yeah see see I live by grace Live by grace, man. God is good. God is good every day. <laughs> no, but I was really happy, and I was just kind of like so thankful. And um, and because I was thankful, on the way back, I just felt this like desire to kind of tell you guys this story that really helps me out a lot in my life. And I don't know how applicable it might be for other people. And I don't know how good this story might be. But it really helps me out personally. And I know that there's a lot of uh, young Christians out there and people, and then there's some so so Christians out there who are kind of losing faith. And I understand that, you know, I've been there and I'm still, you know, looking at other mature Christians for help as well. But I, I believe that we, you know, we're in this world to help each other out. You know, some days I'm weak and there are other, other amazing people out there that, that edify me. Man, these, these, some of these emails of these like holy people and they come and these amazing Christian brothers and sisters and they kind of like write this this essay and tell me about God. And it's just like, dang, this is what I needed. You know what I mean? This is what I needed. And my desire for you guys is to just do the same. If there's only one or two people that actually receive some change in that, that's worth it. This is good business. <laughs> And so I wanted to kind of tell you guys this story. Yeah? Um, this story is about Mebi Boset. Kind of ridiculous name. <laughs> it's a hard name, man. Like I have a really hard time saying that name. But it's Mebi Boset. And uh, let me give you a little background story first. Now this is a story about when David, King David, was about to become king. Um, th there was a uh, friend of David, the best friend of David was Jonathan. And Jonathan was the next in line to the throne. Jonathan was the son of Saul. 
Okay. Now, at first, God anointed Saul to become the king of Israel, you know, because he was tall, he was handsome, he was just like a head taller than everybody else. So, you know, on the outer appearance, you know, Saul looked very kingly. You get what I'm saying? Like, he looked very kingly. But later on, you realize it's not the outside that God sees, but the inside. Saul might look like a king, but he was a coward. He did not obey God's commands. He, he had no courage when he came down to it. He had no faith. You know, he was just an exterior, a carcass. He had no, no heart. But on the, uh, on the, light, uh, on the flip side, um, David, he was like so small. He was weak, but he was a shepherd, you know. But this kid, he even defeated lions and bears because he had faith in God. And God anointed David, and, and he saw inside his heart. And he knew inside his heart that he was a strong, courageous, and a man who loved God, right? So he chose David. But when David was about to become king, Saul was, like, really jealous of David, you know? I mean, David killed Goliath, you know what I mean? And these, these women out in the streets loved David, because I guess David was really cute or something like that. <laughs> And so when David would go down in the chariot, they would sing like, Saul killed his thousands and David killed his ten thousands, you know, emphasis on ten thousand. And Saul would get so mad, you know what I mean? He would get so mad at that. Like, as a man, I feel you, you know, as a man, that would sting a little bit, you know, like for, for many years, people were only cheering you, you know, like, oh, Saul, you're the greatest king. But all of a sudden, this little kid you know, tops you. So I get it. So I think it reflects human's heart a lot. But anyways, so Saul sought to kill David from that moment. He was just like, man, I want to kill this dude. So every time he would like throw spears at him and try to kill him and stuff like this. So a lot of cat and mouse things go goes along, right? But eventually, um, David takes the throne. God leads David the right path, and he eventually becomes the king of Israel. But before he became the king of Israel, Jonathan made a covenant with David. You know, Jonathan asked David, he's like, hey, when you become king, have mercy on me and have mercy on my children. I know what my dad is doing. I, I, my dad is doing some crazy things to you, but, you know, I don't feel that way. And please have mercy on my son and my children and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And David says, Of course, I make this covenant with you. As Lord as my as Lord is my witness, I will not, you know, blah 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 blah. Right. So as Jonathan predicted, David eventually becomes king. And it was time for him to, you know, live up to this promise. But then there was a silly maid, a very silly maid at the time. And this maid thought that. David would have vengeance upon all the sons of Saul. You know? It's realistic. Like, you think about it very humanistically, it makes sense. Like, you know, if you're the son of the former king, you might be able to, like, you know, start up an army and then, like, try to, like, take over the throne again. So it's in the best interest of the, the new king to kill off all the heir, right? I mean, that's, that's normal. We see this in a lot of movies, you know? So, so this maid took the baby and he ran with it. But on the way, she was panicking or something. It dropped the baby. And then the baby, like, hurt his legs. And it became lame. And lived in secret for, like, a long time. But when this news came about that, you know, David wanted to show mercy upon the children, this came into the ears of Me uh, Mebibosheth. And, you know, he, he revealed himself. But when... And he, I, I think that when he revealed himself that he must have had this heart of like, dude, my life sucks as it is. I'm tired of hiding. I, I could imagine maybe May Bosev living like that. Just like, man, I'm so tired of being afraid of death. Because the maid has been feeding that lie all his life. The maid is always telling him like, dude, if you ever show your face, if you ever go into the marketplace and somebody recognize you as the son of Jonathan, they will kill you. And so this kid growing up have this mentality, you know, and he's lame, so he can't walk anywhere. And he's just like living such a stressful, poor, miserable life. 
And if that doesn't represent our life, I don't know what does, you know? And finally, when he hears this news that David wants to show mercy upon the sons of Saul, I would imagine maybe we'll say first being scared, you know, terrified. But compared to his life, his life is death as it is. It's already dead. What's the point? What's the point of living like this? And so what I would have done, as maybe we'll say, realistically, was to look at David's character. Would David really say this and commit murder? Would he really promise something like this and then go ahead and kill me? I don't think David would. I've been looking at this king, you know. This king is, he's wise and he's God-fearing. So as a God-fearer, he probably would not lie. Would he lie to me? I don't know if he would, you know. And so he would probably look through this. And then the conclusion was, no, David wouldn't lie to me. And so he had a heart like Esther. If I die, I die, you know. But I'm going to go and, and hear him out. And he had this faith, right? No matter how small or big the, his faith was, I don't know. But he had faith. And so he took that leap of faith and he trusted in the word of David, right? And when he trusted in the word of David, he, he gained the blessings. What David had in his heart all along was to bless this kid. This, David wanted to bless him and give him all this land. And so when maybe was to show himself to David, that's exactly what David did. He said, all the land that your, your king, your father had, I will give to you. It's yours. Do what you, do what you want with it. You will have an amazing position in my kingdom. You will eat with me in my own table every day and you will live in harmony and grace and you will live in perfect peace with me forever. And it's just like, wow. What if, now flip that around. What if Mebibosep, right? He heard this news and said, ah, I don't believe in him. I don't trust in his word. I don't have faith in his word. I'm going to live my way. And I don't care about the king. I'm going to become a king myself. Even when he's lame, he has no legs, people. He has no legs. But he's like, I'm going to be king myself. I don't care. I'm, I'm just going to be king myself. Isn't that the attitude that we have towards God? God is offering us this, this, this offering, this blessing, you know? But we're like, no, I don't want your invitation. I want to do it myself, right? But another significant part is that Mebibosheth was crippled. Now, this might not seem very significant to you guys, but if you, it, in biblical sense, when David was running away from the King Saul, to top it off, to put salt in the wound, there were all these handicaps that came out, lame people. And they came out and they were cursing David and said, you vagabond, you scallywag, or what have you. And you're like, you're never going to come back here. And they were like cursing David and saying, you, you know, you good for nothing. And so David swore vengeance upon them one day. Like, man, when I become king, you guys better run, you know, because I'm not, I'm not going to take it easy on you guys. So he had this anger towards them. And so think about it. Maybe we'll say being a crippled, a son of the enemy of David. So all the conditions are going against him, right? But then the thing that saved Maybe we'll say wasn't himself. It wasn't what he did good. It wasn't his good looks, you know. It wasn't his anything. But rather what Maybe we'll say had, which was a covenant, a promise. That's the most important part, that he had a promise, and this promise was not made between him and David, but it was made between David and Jonathan. So it had nothing to do with him, per se. I mean, it had everything to do with him, but it was a promise between these two people. Right? So the fact that Mebibosheb gets land and food and all the blessings that the king gave had nothing to do with him. So no matter how unworthy he was, he still earns it. You get what I'm saying? That is us. Exactly us. We are like Mebibul said. We are the son of the enemy of God. God says, ye are, li ye are of your father, the devil. And because the devil lies, we lie. Because the devil cheats, we cheat. Because the 
because the devil is jealous of God's position, we are also jealous of our neighbor and also of God. And because the devil said, I shall be like the Most High, we also want to be like the Most High and be gods ourselves. And because the devil is lustful, we also lust. Because the devil is adulterous, we are also adulterous. We act according to our fathers. You see? And so just like that, we are like maybe people said, you know, son of the enemy of God. And we are also crippled. We have no strength on our own. You know, some people might think they're so great and so powerful and all. But put yourself in a hard position where you can't get out. You realize how insignificant you really are. I mean, I seen that movie, uh, 120, wait, 28 hours? Was that 128 hours? Is that it? You know, the one that he got stuck on a little rock? Dude, that guy, you know, he could hike miles and miles and miles and miles. And he knows all of Grand Canyon. Was it Grand Canyon? Or whatever. He knows all of it. So much knowledge. But a little rock just a little rock on his hands and he was stuck there just couldn't do anything and it really you know if you get yourself in a position where you really don't have strength you realize how insignificant we are and maybe was it was like this he was handicapped he was couldn't do anything you know but because of this promise because of this covenant Mebibosep's deformities or what have you was covered as he was eating with him. When he was eating with the king, it didn't matter if he was handicapped or not. He was just eating perfectly fine with him and just, you know, living in this kind of like, you know, perfect harmony with him. And so this story, always, when I live my life, and there are really difficult times that come. You know, sometimes we like to turn towards movies, you know, to give us a little laugh, a little scary thoughts, or I mean, scary movies to kind of get us out of things. And, you know, sometimes we talk to our friends or sometimes we talk to our parents, but they only get us so far, you know, because they're words of people. And I know that people's words can be very comforting, but there's nothing more comfortable and nothing more amazing and fulfilling than the word of God, our creator, our father. And so when we hear the word of God, we know it to be true, and it's, it's, it's life to us. And, and so when I feel unworthy, I kind of put myself in the position of maybe we'll say, you know, just like him. But yet because of a covenant between God and Abraham, we're, we're blessed, you know, and we're, we're rescued out of our sins, and we're forgiven of our sins, and we live in this this blessing this grace and grace is such an amazing thing because grace is free it has nothing to do with us this also implies that no matter how bad you were no matter how filthy your life has been no matter how difficult your life has been or how much you hated God at one point it doesn't matter because the covenant between God and Abraham is still in effect but here's the thing once you trust, right, once you repent, you turn from your sins and you turn towards God. And when you trust in the word of God, just like Mebibo said, trusted in the word of David, you receive the blessing of God. And when you receive the blessing of God, do you think honestly that you will live the life that you lived? Would Mebibo said continue to live the life that he lived when he had, you know, lived with the maid? Would he live in constant fear of death? Would he, would he commit the same crimes or the sins that he had to commit when he was, you know, living without the blessing? No, he wouldn't. Maybe was have life was changed, completely changed. He was born again. He was reborn. Just like this, this is a Christian story. It's exactly the same as the gospel story. You know? I mean, you, I'm pretty sure you guys see it already. And I hope that this message is edifying to you and that it helps you out in your life and for people who don't believe in God I hope that it could give you a little you know insight to the wisdom of God and that oh you know this is practical as well as spiritual and amazing <laughs> I hope to me it is every time I read the Bible and I find something new and how it connects with the story of Christ and it's just like dang did you know that this story this story was written thousands of years apart from the story of Christ, but yet it's talking about the same thing. And it would, it would be amazing just by this story alone, but every book in the Bible is about Christ. 
every single book. Like, amazingly, every single book. From Genesis to Revelation, the whole thing talks about Christ Jesus. It took me a while to realize it, but when I found it, I was like, dang, it's amazing stuff. So I really recommend you guys to read this book. Don't judge it before you read it, the book, because it's... A lot of people say there's like contradictions in the Bible, but they've never read it. They've never read it. They've read little pieces of it. Or they've heard what other people say about it. Anybody can make anything sound bad when they say it. You know what I mean? But when you actually get down to it, you know how many people say, Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know God was about that. You know, so I'm just saying, like, like really don't judge it until you read it yourself. And... I don't know, that's, that's the message I wanted to give in Thanksgiving. And always give thanks to God. And to all my brothers and sisters out there in this world, love you guys. <laughs> and always, you know, stand up for righteousness and and kind of help each other out, grow, you know. And when you guys have amazing words to share with me, please send it to my email so that you, know, you could also edify me. And uh, yeah, have a good Thanksgiving and peace.